Welcome to chapter 2 of our ambitious repertoire 1D4 Winning with White. Now, in the previous chapter, we analyzed the line where Black played Bishop A5, and as a reminder, I have a video covering that. But today, two different lines. When Black keeps the Bishop on C8, the number one idea for White is to play an early 9B5. You can see on the top diagram, top position on the right, knight b5 and bishop f4 targeting c7. And we'll see how that works. In a second line with the blue position at the bottom right, we are playing 4e4 after black tries c5. So in this position, once again, black keeps the bishop on c8 and plays e6, d5, and c5. We'll see how to counter that effectively. Now, let's go into the action. So, ID number one, early knight b5. So, here we're playing knight b5 with white, of course, targeting c7. So, black defense, so we go e3. Black chases the knight, knight comes back, and the knight on a6 go back to c7. And now we go with our standard plan, knight f3, knight e5, and then, very nice, queen f3. So let's see that. Knight e5, and now queen f3. That's very nice because the queen can swing here and be part of the attack. Note how we have two bishops and the knight getting ready to attack the king. And now we go queen h3. Now, in the game, clearly, we're trying to put pressure on h7. It's not checkmate yet, but the pressure is mounting. So let me give you an example. If black were to play b6, g4 is certainly a very strong move. Because now we're threatening g5, and when that knight moves, then we checkmate here. And another idea here is... Black tries c5, we have a nice move, knight b5, targeting this is here. So, in this game, knowing the threat on h7, black play g6. That way, there's certainly no checkmate on h7. At least not now, because we follow Bornik, a stronger master, and he play bishop h6. And now he plays f4. Extremely strong setup for white. We are positioned to attack the black king and we are move 13. g4 played. And now the attack plays by itself. g5. So the knight came back here. And now we finish easily. We are threatening to go to f6. And here, knight f6, and we're finishing on checkmate on h7. Now, the only way to prevent that for black would be to take the knight. But now we're here and targeting checkmate on g7, and we have plenty of ways to finish the game. Black can absolutely do nothing to prevent the attack. So that was a straightforward victory. Now, in this position, we could also try with bishop g3 instead of queen f3. But then, after rook e8, we can play queen f3 and we go back to the same pattern. And here, once again, we're going to do bishop g5, g4 with a clean attack. So that's a very cool idea after 9b5. We start attacking on c7, but then we go back to attack the king side. Now, the second idea I like to cover in this video is what happened is on move 3, instead of knight f6, black try c5. And here, e4 is super strong. Let me showcase the game. So the white queen is attacked. And now note, we have developed our pieces. So we can play long castle 
putting a lot of pressure. And here we go back with knight b5, our key idea, right? Trying to come on c7. In the game, rook c8 was played, we give the check, black cover the check, and now knight d6 and black resign. Very straightforward, let me show another example with the same idea. So we go e4. Still queen a4, and here black try d4. No big deal. We do knight b5, patterning here, and on bishop d7, knight c7, and black has to give the queen. So another example where knight b5 is crushing for white. So we've seen the move e4 and the move 9b5 trading very strong play for white. I hope you enjoyed this chapter and I'll see you in the next one.